just gonna walk around. So, how many of you have had a doll before when you were younger? Show of hands. Alright, yeah. alright guys, and I expected. Okay. Have you guys ever thought about what dolls <coughs> excuse me might represent or what kind of aspect they show of culture? Cool. Well, I have here with me today this paper mache doll from Mexico. And these dolls are very popular and they represent lots of aspects of Mexican culture. So my parents, I'm not, I'm, I was born in America. I'm just gonna hold it to you guys. I was born in America, but my parents came and migrated here from Mexico, so we often embrace the Mexican culture. Now, understanding the doll, the history of it, and the importance of it, you will understand an aspect of Mexican cooking, in particular spices. So, sorry. <laughs> What the doll, okay, the doll, according to uh, Mexican folk art guide, the doll, paper mache dolls originated from China and then moved to France, where they adopted the name paper mache, which literally means chewed paper. So the dolls were then handcrafted every time. To make a paper mache doll, first you have to take a skeletal base, which you can see, and, well, if you hold it, you can kind of feel it. And then you take paper mache and you, you take paper and you stick it on the skeletal base using a thick paste made from flour and water that's cooked to a thick consistency. And then when it's all dry, you kind of just shave it down to the proper appropriate shape you want and then you paint it. Now, paper mache dolls are very popular in Mexico and you can find them in just almost any city. And they're used for different things. Some paper mache dolls are used for children so they can play with. Some are used in uh, re religious ceremonies. And others are for decoration just like this one. Now, this one, according to Lynn Doyle, is called a viejito, which means elderly person. As you can see, the person is old. And the viejitos are commonly used to show uh, aspects of the common people's lives. So she, in particular, is holding a basket of chile de arbos, peppers. And chiles are very important in Mexican food because just about everything consists of spice and chiles. When my parents were young, they would eat chiles with everything. They would eat chiles to marinate food. They would eat chiles on desserts, grounded up as a dessert. I mean, on fruits as a dessert. They would also eat chiles in salsas, and sometimes they just eat chiles on its own. Now, my mom tells me stories about my uncle on how he would gather the cousins and they would have chiles and he would say whoever can eat the most chiles a mordidas would win a peso. Now a mordidas means you take a bite out of it. So you would have to eat the chiles without crying and whoever could eat the most without crying would win the peso. Now in my house, my parents' cooking is so delicious. Like I promise you, I love my parents' home cooking. And the reason why is because it consists of a lot of spice. If he, my, my dad makes pozole, he makes albondigas, which is meatball soup, he makes chicken, mole, everything. And if, it's, if the spice isn't already in the food, you can be sure that there's salsa on the table to go with it. <laughs> so, and my boyfriend and I have been together for like three years and nine months, and I often joke with him and my parents that the only reason he stuck around for so long is because of my parents' food. <laughs> so. For me, it's really important, the chile and the spice that we eat, you know, the smell of it makes my mouth water, I grew up on the food, and it's just a strong aspect of my culture that I'm really proud of. And hopefully one day, when I have my own kids, I'll be able to show them how to eat chiles and how to take the spice, and also I can show them how to cook. I mean, after 18 years of eating my parents' food, I still don't know how to cook it, but I plan to learn. So today you learned about what the paper mache dolls mean and how they show important aspects of the Mexican culture. This one in particular is the chiles. And now you know what it means to me. And hopefully next time you look at a doll, you'll think about what does this doll represent? And what can I see, what can I learn from the culture by looking at it?